Hey everybody, I just want to go over an idea that was really hard for me when uh, when I started game development, and that's the idea of sending arguments to a function, which I know already sounds just super nerdy, uh, but here's the idea. Anytime that you have a function, you have these parentheses here, and those parentheses tell Pico that you're doing a function, but you can also kind of add special things to it. Okay, so for instance, CLS is clear screen. And so what that does is it gets rid of anything that was on the screen and it just deletes it basically. But you can also tell it to do certain things and not just clear the screen, right? So for instance, if we put in CLS and then three, what it's gonna do is clear the screen and it's gonna fill it with color three, which if we look in our sprite editor, Black is color zero, one, two, three. That's this kind of green, all right? So now when we hit control R, that's going to run our game and it's gonna fill the background with this kind of green, right? And so that's called an argument. And so here I'm calling this sprite function, but I have all this other information here and we're just telling it specific things to do, okay? One thing that is really helpful is to use the Pico 8 cheat sheet. So I'll bring this up here. This is just at lexalawful.com. And somebody made this really awesome cheat sheet. And I'll just zoom in here. And it gives you all kinds of ways to write things and kind of shows you, kind of reminds you of all the things that you can do in Pico. And it also gives you the order of the arguments for things, which is amazing. Um, I use this all the time. It gives you all the numbers for the colors. And one that, one that I use a lot is this section here for the sprites. Let me highlight my cursor so you can actually see what I'm doing. So here, it tells you what arguments you can give to the sprite command. So it starts with the SPR, and then N for number, that's the number of sprite, and then X, that's the X position, Y, the, X, the Y position, the width and the height of the sprite, flip X and flip Y. And so you just write those in, in this order, right? So if I want, let's just make a new line here. If I want a sprite, if I write this, it's not going to do anything because I haven't told it what sprite to draw, right? But if I say sprite, let's make a new sprite here just so it's easy. Here's a, I don't know, a yellow thing, orangey thing, all right? <laughs> if I say sprite three, and I run it, it's going to default to drawing that sprite in the upper left-hand corner because I haven't given it anything for the other arguments, right? So if I say sprite three and then 30 comma 30, it's going to write that sprite, sprite three, at 30 on X and 30 on Y. So I'll run it and now this is at 30, 30. The next argument is width and height. So this is really cool. If we have, let's say a sprite that is bigger, if I mouse over here and roll down on the scroll wheel, that's going to zoom out a little bit. And so again, I'm gonna make a very important, very awesome looking sprite, okay? It's an orange, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and let's say this is my, you know, my bad guy. <laughs> he is two tiles wide and two tiles tall. And if I have him selected, I look over here at four, I can say sprite four at 30, 30, but look what happens. It's just his upper left-hand corner. So I have to tell it the width and the height. So let's say two and two. So that's in tiles, not in pixels. Hit save, and now we draw the whole sprite, right? After that, we have flip, which is a true or false. So let's say flip X is true and flip Y is false. Okay, so now he's gonna be looking the other way. So this whole thing, this is a command of how to draw the sprite. And we can put in variables here to change how the sprite is drawn. So that's what we've been doing in this project is we have sprite and we're grabbing the sprite number from our properties from our player, as well as the X and the Y coordinates the width, we're just leaving one and one. 
and we're also passing in the flip x and flip y. And that's how we get this sprite to both move and change the art and flip. So yeah, that's a pretty big deal and nobody really explained that to me. So I thought that would be really helpful for anybody kind of getting into game development. Anytime you have a function, you can pass in different arguments and and kind of change how that function works. You can also do this with your own functions, which uh, if you want to see that video, let me know. Until then, if you've been enjoying this, why don't you uh, consider subscribing? Okay, have a good time.